Hey, it's Pajama Monday again. And I wanted to show you a couple of restorative postures that might feel really good for you if you're feeling a little worn out or if you just did a workout and you feel like you still want to stretch out some stuff. Here, I'm going to adjust this so there's less bunny stuff so you can see what my leg's doing. So I'm on a bolster right now. You could also stack up uh, you know, some folded blankets or a couple of firm pillows or three soft pillows or however high you want it. And I'm allowing my leg to come out to the side here. So the leg coming out to the side here is supported by the blanket. And what the bolster does is it doesn't force my hips off the floor so I can fit my leg out here. So even if you can get your leg out to like a 90 degree angle, we're kind of trying to dial it down a little bit. And this might be more accessible for the average body. So this is what we're really kind of looking for here is we want to make this pose accessible to most people. And we also aren't going for extreme ranges of motion, even if we happen to fall in that category. Um, for me, my hips don't, uh, my leg won't rotate out that far anyways. I mean, it can go a little bit higher. But the idea of restorative yoga is not to take you to your extremes. It's to take you somewhere like in the happy medium so you can be supported. And so your body is still doing different shapes, um, but gentle and chill. Also, restorative yoga tends to hold the poses for quite a long time. I'm going to be holding these poses for maybe two or three minutes apiece. The advantage you have, of course, is that you can pause the video if you want to hold it longer and have your own timer, okay? So what I have here is the bolster is down to about where my front hip point is, a little bit lower than that. So the bony part of your hip that protrudes out, most people can find it in their own bodies, and my legs kind of hanging off, and it's just loose. And uh, what I'll do is I'll show that to you on the other side, what it kind of looks like. So I'm going to rest here. Uh, my hair's kind of every which way. And my body is, my torso is, I should say, long enough um, or short enough that my face can fit on here. But if your face doesn't fit on your bolster and you don't want to have your head hanging down, feel free to support it with another object. Otherwise, uh, for me, I'm feeling like I need to turn my head towards my knee. And as you lie here, if you feel that there's too much pressure in the front of your body, try to relax for a moment first. And as you breathe, picture sending most of the uh, expansion of the lungs into the back of your ribs. And if you've ever seen um, a... a replicate model of the lungs, uh, they do tend to inflate um, mostly in the back body anyways. And so when the front of your body is constricted and you feel that you're not able to get in enough air, it could be that you might be breathing through your mouth, for instance, because the mouth tends to only inflate the first couple of lobes um, or even sometimes just the first lobe of your lung which is at the top of the chest. So try to use the nose if you can. And then at this point I'm going to turn my head to the other side. It requires a hair adjustment. Your arms can be loosely arranged or supported by other pillows or blankets. Remember this is about feeling good not about accessing some intense sensation in the body. If lying still is an intense sensation uh, mentally, then that might be something that you explore a little bit at a time. So one minute might feel like agony in a very overstimulated brain. 
and so that might be enough for you and maybe down the line two or three minutes becomes more comfortable you don't have to force the breath in and out you just want to be aware that it's traveling through much of the torso, that your lungs are inflating, that your abdomen moves. Good. So we'll come out here. If you're still chillaxing, feel free to pause the video. I'm going to sort of drape the head down. And what I'm going to do is come to a symmetrical pose before I get asymmetrical the other way. And so child's pose will be the pose of choice here. Now, this blanket for many people may want to hide behind the backs of the knees because not everyone can bend their knees to the extreme that child's pose typically requires. And so that might go back there and support you. Again, the head position is optional. I seem to be enjoying my head to the right. Just have a feeling of ease. Don't try to be in a position that requires a lot of um, mental fortitude. Try to find a place where there can be ease in the mind and body. And allow the breathing to be easy as well. If you feel that you have to take in a deeper breath here and there, that's fine. You may even want to sigh out the mouth once in a while. And when your body is in child's pose, the front of the body making contact with the bolster, it may feel nice to sense the deeper tactile sensation as you breathe in and less sensation as you breathe out. So you can pause if you want. Otherwise, we're going to take this out to the side and we're going to move you around. So you can see what my straight leg is doing, which again, is just for, it's not for you to copy, it is just a reference point. So the straight leg here is hanging off right about where the muscle kind of starts. The front hip point is like an inch into the bolster and it's just lying really chill. I'm not straightening it, I'm not locking it. My foot is relaxed with the top of the foot is on the floor. Okay, so that's the straight leg there. And then for this one, you may, if you want to, my hair is a constant, uh, it's like another limb I have to negotiate. You may find that uh, you want to support the head with a block. I don't know where my block is. Oh, it's up there. But the block could be <laughs> like on its highest setting and you could have your forehead resting on the block. Otherwise, just check in with the other side here. It's kind of like a prone, really loose version of tree or you could call it a, an Arda Mandukasana, half frog. You don't have to call it anything but comfortable. Ideally. If you're experiencing a, um, a large discrepancy between both sides of your body, I would say uh, don't force the less um, compliant side to match the other side. I would actually back off on the side that is a bit more open and try to come down to this 
slightly tighter or less closed side. Tighter is a misnomer. You might not actually be tight, especially when it comes to hips. Um, hip formation and um, femur formation, greater trochanter, all of that can be so varied from body to body. And even depending on experiences early on, can be varied from side to side. So best not to force. We do a lot of forcing in life. We often force ourselves to work jobs we don't love or to be around people that drive us a little nutty or drive through traffic that we probably don't enjoy. And so while you're working on changing your perspective of those things or maybe changing the actual situations, it doesn't seem to make sense to force our bodies to do things that could be injurious. And when it comes to forcing your joints and limbs in positions that you know don't feel quite right, I would say we probably need to do less of that, less forcing and more easefulness. So I'm going to get out of this side here. You can stay longer if you want. And then for the sake of symmetry, I've got both legs hanging off here. So I've got the front hip points, again, the bony parts of the hips. Yes, those are Mario pants. They were a gift. And then I got just a tiny part of the top of my thigh, and then my legs are just going to hang whatever position they freaking want. And for a lot of people, when you're, they're prone like this, the heels tend to turn out. And if yours don't, that's fine. What I would do is wiggle the hips around a little bit and just get a, a nice um, natural width of the legs and rotation of the legs. And try not to force legs together or apart or a particular style of rotating from the hips or the knees. And just ending your restorative practice with a bit of symmetry could be really helpful, particularly to have the chest down with the legs straight, allowing the legs to hang off and giving the low back a little bit of neutrality in a passive way. And then as you breathe here, we're going to take 10 more cycles of breath before we close the video. Pause if you want to just chill here for as long as you can. Or breathe in and then breathing out. You can breathe deeply or moderately. It's up to you. Allow the second breath to enter. Let the exhale be full. Let it all out. And then as you are moving through your cycle of breath, you might be at or approaching halfway. Feel how much the body can sink into the bolster and how heavy the legs can allow gravity to press the shins and the tops of the feet and the toenails into the ground. You can switch your head position if you need to for these last few cycles. Notice if the arms can get heavier, if they're able to roll off of either side of your bolster or pillows. The palms are facing up for the last couple of breaths here. Let the backs of the hands feel more rooted. Backs of wrists, part of the forearm, passively increasing in heaviness. And then if you're ready to get out, you can walk the hands closer Push back, let your head drag across your props. Otherwise, stay here 
and have an awesome rest of your evening, day, or afternoon.